take a look at when you would use hypothesis testing when you're doing linear regression. And what you're going to do is you're going to want to use that uh, to prove something about the slope. We, just like when we did confidence intervals, we're only going to use it when we have some sort of random sample, not a census, of data in our scatter plot. And we, the reason we focus on the slope, again, is slope is what proves or shows a relationship between the two different quantitative variables. If there is a slope to our regression line, there's probably some sort of relationship going on. What we want to do is prove if the variables truly are dependent. Is the slope uh, potentially zero, or maybe we just got lucky because of a couple of random points? Or is there absolutely no doubt in our mind uh, that the slope is something far away from zero, uh, statistically significantly not zero? And to check that, we set up a randomization test in uh, StatKey. We're going to use the same set of data here. And let's just pull that up right away and see what that looks like. So we go to the test for the slope under randomization. And the first thing I'm going to do is edit my data. I can control A to highlight all of the data in the table and delete what's in there. And I have my own data ready to paste in. So I control V to paste that in. And I'm going to, just like when I did confidence intervals, change this correlation over to slope. And you'll see that the null hypothesis is that beta 1 is equal to 0, or the slope is equal to 0. That is the default assumption. And remember, with, null, or with a hypothesis, we're always trying to prove the null wrong. So we're trying to prove that, no, the null hypothesis is, in fact, not uh, true that the slope does not equal zero. And to do that, let's generate uh, a bunch of different samples here and look at where these things come from. If we go across, we can see down in the bottom right here, it updates what each of these uh, slopes represent. As you go farther and farther to the right, the slope gets steeper and steeper and steeper. As you go right in the middle, you're talking about slopes of zero. And the way that these graphs are generated is, is it takes uh, all of the x's and all of the y's and randomly assigns them to one another. So for each given x that you have in this original set of data, one of these y values is going to be randomly assigned to it. So in the case of this one here, in the original data set, it's 4620 miles per gallon. Here we have 4600. 31 miles per gallon, and that's just because that 31 was randomly assigned to be paired with the 4600 at that time. And as you get more and more towards the middle, things are less ex extreme, and as you get farther and farther to the ends, you have some severe downslopes and some severe upslopes. So like any hypothesis test, I need to decide if it's two-tail um, or one-tail, left or right. The null is that the slope is zero and our alternative is that the slope is not zero so it is a two-tail test. Next thing I want to do is look at my actual slope negative point zero zero three five and in this case I'm actually going to copy it negative point zero zero three five and I'm going to go down here to the lower end to the left end where it looks like I have something pretty close to that and I'm going to paste in that value my graph will automatically update itself and it looks like I have a 0 0.011 probability of finding a slope that uh, extreme or more extreme when uh, we assume that the slope is zero, that the null hypothesis is true. And that value is so small that we would decide to reject. We would uh, reject the null and say, no, we have a, a significant slope. Our slope is statistically significant. So going back here, if we look at what that graph roughly looks like again, we set our uh, null hypothesis automatically just by opening up the correct graph. We then generated lots of samples, made sure that we had our setting to slope, not correlation. Then we set uh, our lower 
end value, uh, in this case the point 0035 to our actual slope. You would decide which side to go on uh, based on which one was negative, which one was positive. So looking at your actual slope, you would decide from this graph, do I go to the left side or to the right side? But we always want to do a two-tail test either way, because we're testing if the slope is or is not equal to zero. We don't have a particular direction in mind there. Once we set that, we get our ever-important p-value. Because it's a two-tail test, you need to take both of these p-values uh, and add them together. We get point zero, two, one as our p-value up there. So that is less than 0.05. We do uh, reject in most cases. So contextualizing this a little bit, we're going to assume that car weight and miles per gallon are independent for cars. We're going to say then that there is a 0 0.021 probability of finding a slope as extreme as we did. We assume that it's zero, that's what we mean when we say we assume that weight and miles per gallon are independent for cars. Weight and miles per gallon have nothing to do with each other, therefore the slope is zero. When we assume that, there's only a 0.021 probability of finding a slope as extreme this far away as we did. So it's fairly unlikely uh, to assume then that they are independent. They could be independent, and there's a 2% chance we would get data that look like we did. But uh, more than likely, weight and miles per gallon do have something to do with each other in most vehicles. Again, the structure of this sentence is going to look very familiar to when we worked with uh, any kind of standard hypothesis test. We start out assuming the null is true. In this case, assuming weight and miles per gallon are independent. So that's our initial assumption. Then, what kind of probability is there of something happening? There is a 0.021 probability of finding, in this case, a slope as extreme as we did. So the slope being uh, that beta 1 that they talk about up here in top that I have circled in green. Uh, the probability of finding a slope that is as extreme as we did is just very unlikely.